Malta is one of the most spectacular ports to sail into, so it's worth getting up early for. This is a glimpse of what you will see. Welcome to Doris Visits Malta. Hey, please subscribe and like this video where Jean will take you, firstly, to the ancient capital of Medina. She will show you the lift up to Valletta, visit the cathedral, walk down past the current palace to a 16th century palace. By the Fort St. Elmo, the National War Museum, she will show you the St. John's Knights experience, the market, St. Paul's Island, and Shipwreck Church. And then she sets off for a panoramic tour, Tarxerian temples still being excavated, sites from around 6,000 years BC. First, the bus station. You'll find it by either turning left at the end of the dock road up the hill and taking the steps, or from town down the main road through the Commonwealth Walkway and you'll see it from Triton's Fountain. And for a couple of pounds, you can travel for four hours. That means you can get to most places and back. You just look up where you want to go, it'll tell you the bus numbers and the bays are behind you. This is an organized scheduled bus service. St Paul's Cathedral is described as a Baroque masterpiece and the dome and the belfries are what gives the city of Medina its distinct skyline. We've arrived at the walled city of Medina. <laughs> We've arrived at the walled city of Medina. It took about 40 minutes on the bus, but it was very trafficy. It was the C2 bus from Valletta. Medina is also known as the silent city. A little bit of trivia. The reason for this is it used to be the capital, but when they moved the capital and people moved out, they said it was like a ghost town. So that's why it got its nickname, the silent city. So let's go and explore. This museum is the Knights of Malta and there's a show and then you walk through the museum. It's open till five o'clock. There are stunning views everywhere you look. It's a really good place to just wander around the streets. St Paul's Cathedral is opposite the Cathedral Museum where you buy your tickets should you want to visit and it's described as a Baroque masterpiece and the dome and the belfries are what gives the city of Medina its distinct skyline. We're going to take the lift today, but if you turn right from the ship, you will pass the hop on, hop off bus, which is another option. Because of Valletta's strategic position en route to the Middle East and Holy Lands, it is inseparable from religion and war, forts, fortifications, and churches. Today is windy. The covers are on the carriages. But we will walk you from the main square down past the cathedral and palace to the main port, then up a different road past the marketplace and St Paul's Shipwreck Church to the new square and the bus terminus.
Malta got its independence in 1974. The Auberge de Castile is quite a spectacular building. Opposite, St James Cavalier was designed to keep people out. Now it's a cinema, theatre and studios. This claims to be Valletta's first church. Walking down to St John's Cathedral, here was a palace originally built in 1574 but rebuilt in 1760 uh, to serve as the courts of justice. Napoleon lived here for a week in 1798. These are the new courts of justice and they are opposite St John's Co-Cathedral. This is a co-cathedral because it shares the seat with the older cathedral in Medina. The whole floor of this cathedral is made up of about 400 tombs of knights and officers of the Order of St. John. The white head in the center of screen is one of many street art statues with words of wisdom. This is the palace. Walking down the steps from St. John's Co Cathedral, we're passing the 16th century palace of a Maltese noble family on our way down to the harbor. If you want to have a look inside, it'll be nine euros. You really have to concentrate coming down these steps. They're very shallow and be easy to miss your footing. You can see how important water's strategic position is because of all the different fortifications throughout the ages. The fortifications are either side of the harbour entrance and this is the Mediterranean's deepest natural built in the mid 16th century and today it hosts the National War Museum. They have the covers on the train because the weather's not great today 
behind me is the Maltese Experience, which is a film of the history of Malta. And just to my left is the Knights Hospital. This London dungeon type experience is normally five euros, but we got in for three euros fifty without him even needing to check our driving license for being a senior. The militarisation of the hospitalers was the main work of Gerard de Poy. The hospital was built in 1574, which was after the great siege of Malta in 1565, where shockingly 1,600 Turkish soldiers lost their life and only 60 of the invading soldiers were killed. This is a small exhibition in cellars underground and is well worth three euros fifty entrance fee. Fast food upstairs, gorgeous fruit and vegetables downstairs and Waitrose products. I wonder who owns this. Behind me is St Paul's Island. It has a statue of St Paul on it and it's meant to mark the exact spot where St Paul was shipwrecked off Malta. This is St Paul's shipwreck church where a bomb fell and failed to explode. Those of you who like city biking, just up by the port, you can pick up a next bike. Choose bike, open app, follow instructions. Another way to see Malta is on a Segway. This was a big Roman theatre, but unfortunately it was bombed by the Germans. It's still used as an open air theatre. This is the Commonwealth Walkway, opened by Her Majesty the Queen in 2015. Behind the Statue of Independence is this very pleasant garden, which was built by the Grand Master for the recreation of the night, and it leads you down to another church.
we do have to go through passport control here in Malta. Straight up to the coach and our bags will be on the ship. Cruise check-in is often a big old shed, but in Malta it's a medieval tunnel uh, carved underneath some old fort. Here you'll have your picture taken, your credit card swiped. And now we're going to go into the protected area of the ship. So you entered the country, you left the country, and now your cruise card will get you in and out of Malta. Sadly, the cruise is over. It's like a special corridor. Until your next cruise, it's time now to just cruise virtually by watching the cruise destinations here on Doris Visits. As you come out of the port, you get your tourist map at the tourist information desk. They say turn left to spend more money. And if you turn left from the ship, there are plenty of beaches where you can swim. But if you want the best beach, it's Ladies Beach and it's beyond the castle the other way. After the Ottoman Empire, he made the modern Turkey, 1923. Right. Before 1923, the name of the country was Ottoman, Ottoman Empire. But 1923, he made modern Turkey. This Pigeon Island fort was a naval base protecting these shores during Byzantine and Ottoman times. We've arrived at Troy. It's about five minutes away from the museum in the coach. The important positioning of the land of Troy meant that it was occupied for over 3,000 years. So there was Troy 1, Troy 2, right up to Troy 9, and they're all standing on top of each other. No one knows what they were actually called, but archaeologists have labelled them that. Kybet's killing heat here in, you know, real hot summer. The main feature here is a retirement home for an old Roman emperor. Guess where we are? We're in Split. Welcome to the island of Bukwe in the Grenadine Islands. Today we're in Honolulu and we're visiting Pearl Harbor. The, the, all the huts were open last night selling fresh food, there were kids playing, it was all lit up so it was lovely. Unfortunately you can't see any of that right now. This really is a family business. We decided to walk up the steps rather than queue for the elevator because there was a long queue. And the tourist office is right in the middle of the square. Grand Island Beach is about seven miles from the port and one dollar on a public bus is a pretty good deal to get here. <laughs> Alta is a small but beautiful town. Did you make any of these statues? A few of them. Did you? Amber Cove has a totally different feel to the other cruise ports. It's purpose built. It's kind of like a theme park. We're nearly there and we're on the escalator for the final leg. And so that's a local dish. Thank you, Ruth. How do I stop? How do I stop? So the taxi here cost other cruisers 30 US dollars. It cost us four. So the food was free.